What's up, everybody? This is John Odermatt, the host of Felony Friday. And before we get rolling into today's show, I want to take a quick moment to talk about coffee. That's right, coffee. The Lions of Liberty, we have partnered up with Anarcho Coffee, and we are selling our very own coffee. It's called the Morning Roar. It is a medium dark roast that has cupping notes of lemon lime, caramel, black pepper, and brown sugar. It is delicious. You can pick up some of this coffee by going to lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. We have a way there on your first purchase. You can get 10% off, but if you join the Pride for $10 and up, you can actually get more than that. You can get 15% off every single order. Buy some coffee support the Lions of Liberty, support another great libertarian company as well. Everybody wins. Lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. Welcome to Felony Friday, a presentation of the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, John Odermatt. Felons, friends, and freedom lovers, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Felony Friday, a weekly show right here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Guys, it's great to have you here. Got an awesome show lined up. Going to be talking with Maj Touré, who is running for city council as a libertarian in the great city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, the other side of the state from me. I'll get to that in just a minute here. Before I do that, I just want to let you guys know that this is only one of three shows on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Uh, Lions of Liberty, we invented the Libertarian Variety Show. It was our idea. We were the first to do it. Now we got a bunch of copycats. Every Libertarian podcast wants a variety show with different formats and all that stuff. Well, guess what? We made it cool, and we're still the best at doing it. So if you like what you hear, please be sure to check out all three of our shows. Check out our show on Monday hosted by Mark Clare. Mark's about to uh, have his 400th episode coming up here soon. Mark interviews leaders in the Liberty Movement and hosts roundtable discussions. Brian McWilliams hosts our Wednesday show. It's called Electric Liberty Land. It's entertaining as all get out. If you missed last Wednesday's episode, tick on back in the old podcast feed there. Had an episode of Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor with Brian and Jason Stapleton and Michael Bolden. It was something else. (laughs) Let me tell you, I was laughing pretty hard uh, throughout most of that show. Entertaining as heck. So check that out. Just subscribe so you get every single episode delivered right to your little uh, magical listening device you keep in your pocket that we call your cell phone. And that's all you got to do. And you do that, you're good to go. Today's episode of Felony Friday, this is the 174th episode of this show. I cannot believe it. Time flies. Do you find the show notes, <coughs> links to everything I'm going to talk about with Maj Ture today, and probably most importantly, to find links to donate to his campaign, to donate to Black, Gun Ma- Black Guns Matter, all that stuff um, that he has going for him. Go to the show notes page at lionsofliberty.com slash ff one. 74. That's it, guys. Let's get rolling into the show. My guest today on Felony Friday is Maj Touré. Uh, Maj is the founder of Black Guns Matter. That's a group that educates people in urban communities on their Second Amendment rights and responsibilities through firearms training and uh, education. He has recently announced that he is running as a libertarian for the at-large seat on the Philadelphia City Council. Uh, This is Maj's third time? Yeah, third time on the show. Um, Once um, just uh, remotely on Skype. And uh, the second time I actually got to interview Maj in person down in uh, New Orleans at the Libertarian National Convention. And I'll link to those on the show notes page of this episode. Maj, welcome back to Felony Friday. What's up, man? Thanks for having me back. Good to be a felon. (laughs) Well, you don't have to be a felon to to be on Felony Friday, but uh, you know, I, I wanted to bring you back on the show because obviously you're, you know, you're making making a lot of news right now. You're making some moves, uh, not only for uh, for gun rights as you've been doing for for quite a while now, but also for uh, making some moves in the Libertarian Party and in the political arena. So, uh, 
Before we get started talking about specifics and your campaign and, and all that stuff, uh, probably a lot of people didn't know that that you were a libertarian. Uh, you know, I, I met you at the Libertarian National Convention. I wasn't sure if you were libertarian or not, but so what's what's attracted you to the Libertarian Party? So it's, just, it's, it's a few things. Um, one, and the more and more, you know, I do this work, the more and more I learn. Um, and in learning, I'm learning how so many founding fathers didn't want a two-party system, even like the real famous ones, like George Washington. You know, and so now in, in seeing people, I got tons of friends as Democrat. I got tons of friends as Republican. And the reality is um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, conversation about people going, you know, in one direction. And it's not really helpful. You know, Democrat policies and, in, in, you know, in urban centers have been horrible, horrible for the Americans that live in those urban areas. So in essence, in seeing that and seeing that, you know, it's like, OK, um, we have a balanced approach. So, OK. I can show that Republicans haven't been as uh, negative as, you know, mainstream media or even the left uh, painted them to be. But at the same time, the left has painted the picture of the right as just racist, right? Without looking at the fact of the Democratic Party was the party of the Klan, so forth and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. But I can't really argue that point. So to me, it's like, both well, one, the founding fathers, even with those guys having their contradictions, they didn't even want a two-party system. We're in a two-party system, and my hood doesn't really bang with. They know that something's wrong with the people that they, we've been consistently voting for, the Democratic Party. We know that, you know, that, or at least they think that the Republican Party means racist. So instead of me fighting against both of that, why not go with a party of liberty? Why not? As the more and more that I understand, it's like, yo, these ideals and principles transcend any particular party. So if it's really about the general public evaluating a situation. It's like you said, I was at the Libertarian National Convention, and you're like, is this guy libertarian? Because the ideology is the ideology. I don't have to lead with party. Mm-hmm. I can lead with the actual ideology. I can tell people about the non-aggression principle. I can tell people about, yo, I'm going to be in control of me, you're going to be in control of you, that's it. I can tell people, everybody from the hood is, uh, you know, has more conservative freedom, liberty-minded values. they have just been caught up in this party politics for so long. So in order for me to do it right and let it be, you know, just the principles, like, okay, why don't I just go something that nobody's, everybody in the hood go, yeah, I like that philosophy. I like what you're saying. And if I say, yeah, I'm a libertarian, they don't know what I'm talking about. Other people may look at that as like negative, but I look at that as something that's beautiful. I look at that as something like a clean slate. I look at that as something that we haven't been hit with the paint. We haven't been tainted uh, in the hood the negative uh, marketing of the Libertarian Party. And one of my favorite artists from one of my favorite groups is a Libertarian, and nobody ever knew. It's one, he's one of the biggest like groups of all time. Who's that? And he's, a, he's been a Libertarian for years. Big boy from Outcast. Really? Yeah. I had no idea about that. See? So, uh, like, what what kind of... I know you're saying that, you know, people in the hood are more, more open-minded. They haven't gotten... You know all the the propaganda about the you know Libertarian Party. I should say against the Libertarian Party. But like, so what kind of initial reaction do you get when you say, "Yeah, I'm, I'm running as a Libertarian"? Well, one, I don't even tell them that. I don't. I, if they happen to ask, I'll have that. We'll have that conversation. Mm-hmm. But what I tend to do is just go. You know, we talk about the issues. If you talk about the issues, if you talk about just liberty and freedom based thought. The truth is going to resonate. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, if you do this right, I think a lot of people lay it on the party because they don't have any substance. I think they go, okay, I'm going to get a whole bunch. Of, I can get a little bit more of the black vote over the Democrat or a little bit more of the black vote over the Republican. They say they're just talking to their base, to keep their base solid, and they just want to get a little bit swayed left, left and right from left and right. So they have to leave the party because they need their gang to be identified. I don't want to talk to anybody about a party initially. Usually what happens is they'll go, man, the things that you're talking about, and I agree with so many of them, after that, then it'll get to, yo, as you a Democrat, as you a Republican, I'm in this weird place because I'm from the hood, I live in the hood, I'm in the hood every day. I say these freedom ideologies, I, I quote Malcolm X in the same vein as I quote Thomas. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about 
stuff that Garvey would be talking about and talking about stuff that Patrick Henry would be talking about. And I live, I live, and I'm in around, you know, really like famous Republicans. So after getting to the ideology, people go, man, I, I wonder what, because we're conditioned to go one of two party systems. Mm-hmm. Then if they ask, then if I say, yeah, I'm a libertarian, then there's another teachable moment on top of that. Well, what is a libertarian? What are the values? I've never heard of that before. What is that party? I didn't even know that that was an option. But when you leave a party and you know the general public, usually, not all the time. The general public may not even be aware of what, in my hood at least, may not be aware of what libertarian even means. You lose them. So don't lose them. Just right. have a conversation about freedom, liberty, peace, you know, happiness, property rights, natural law, human rights, so forth and so on. Yeah, I think that's a great point. That's a great point for really any anybody who's running a campaign out there, no matter what party you're in. Hopefully, if you're listening to this show, you're at least liberty minded. But yeah, making that connection first, you know, building that coalition, finding that common ground, aligning on principles, and then and then go from there. I think too often, yeah, people beat their chest. Libertarians do the same thing. They beat their chest, or they try to different different differentiate themselves by, you know acting overtly libertarian and saying things that, you know, make them stand out and might seem outlandish in, in society rather than just trying to say, Hey, we actually agree on mostly everything and, and starting from there. So I, I think that's awesome. Um, you know, I know, I know that running as a libertarian running in any third party um, can be a little bit harder to get on the ballot. Right. So like what kind of what? limitations or obstacles do you have in front of you get to get on the ballot? So, one, I have to get about 3,200 signatures. And this is the thing that I really want to talk about as far as ballot access. There's absolutely no reason that you should have this many signatures needed for somebody to get on the ballot. That's insane. That does not make sense at all. I mean, what, what, what extra credentials does it give that I could get somebody to give me their signature 3,200 times? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. To me, I don't, I don't even understand. And that's part of the reason why I think it actually makes me a good candidate because I can look at things from a, you know, a logical and common sense perspective as opposed to, well, this is how we do do it and never asking the question. It's no different than the work that we've done at Black Lives Matter, right? We needed to make sure that mental health was a component in our classes, that conflict resolution was a component in our classes. It doesn't make sense to do it as it's been done if we have to solve the problems that have been presented as we've been doing it, as it's been done. So, to me, ballot access, I can get 3,200 signatures, you know. Um, I mean, it's cool. I'll do it. You know, I'll get to it. You know, that's not really a hard thing. I'm probably going to get, like, 10,000 signatures just to be safe. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but that's the thing with it. You know, um, the benefit is I can watch everybody play itself in the primary. You know what I mean? Just repeating the same that they say every time it's voting time. It doesn't matter how many years, city, state, national election, everybody's going to talk about taxes. Everybody's going to talk about, you know, the children and the safety. Everybody's going to talk about, you know, uh, education. It's the same statement with no actual solutions to be presented. For me, even some of the, the polls that I'm noticing, I'm like, damn, y'all didn't even put me. Philly.com put an put a, a interview out, uh, an article, asking about what each one of the persons the uh, candidates running, what, you know, what their position was. I wasn't even on it. And I'm like, wow, that's that's interesting. To me, it's like neglect is my ally because I know these people for the most part aren't, aren't from the community or they're incumbents that don't even really care. They, they feel like they, I've been here forever. I'm going to just be here forever. Then um, on top of that, they don't have a vote for the people. These are people mm-hmm. just talking about that we're okay with taxing people an additional 5% for sugary drinks. Not even just soda sugary drink. We're going to add more taxes onto poor people to attack their particular choice. Listen, I'm a person that smokes cigars. That is cancer. Let's be clear. Let's be very clear. Cigar is a cigarette. You have a higher risk of getting cancer. Mm -hmm. People die by the hundreds of thousands every year from smoking cigars and cigarettes. Still my choice. Still my body. So we understand these concepts from one level. But then we say, well, Sugary drinks aren't that healthy, so you shouldn't have them. So we're going to tax people more. You know, saying it's good, we're going to put money to the schools. This is going to be good. No, it's not. It's horrible for retailers. It's horrible for big businesses. It's just not. And so we can't come up with a different way. 
philanthropy dominoes is playing the pothole out of their own volition. Why can't we create some sort of tax abatement for companies that, or corporations that decide to say, hey, you guys need an extra $6 million for the schools? We'll give it to you. And then we reward them for choosing to support. See, these mm-hmm. are the out-of-the-box thinking process that I know some of the politicians go, well, we can't really do it that way because it wasn't done that way. Well, at a certain point, there was no such thing as planes or cell phones. But I'll be damned if I'm not, I don't fly across the country all the time now and I'm talking to you from my cell phone. Right. So these are all of these outdated philosophies that, you know, like ballot access, like all of these things. Listen, if you got a platform, if you want to be a public servant, you shouldn't need to get a bunch of signatures in order to do that. What do signatures mean in, in reality, not theory? In reality. So those are some of the things that I go, you know, against. But it's cool. Like some of these guys just running for the city council seat at large. They're developers. And there's a thing called council manic privilege where that councilman or councilwoman gets a big say in what land or areas are developed by developers in their district or at large, whatever. My point there is you're a developer. I know exactly why you want this seat. So you can make it good for your friends that develop homes. Maybe not even the most dirty homes. Maybe some inexpensive slapping together prefab homes that you can put together for sixty, a hundred thousand dollars and sell it for two million dollars, and then push gentrification in my community. I'm hip. But these guys are really loaded, which is why the shameless plug that's coming up now is MajOrPhilly.com. I need everybody to donate. I'm up against seven Goliaths. It's just me, David with the sling, or the AR, right? <laughs> like seven Goliaths. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a really rich Goliath, you know? And they don't really, in my experience, they, you know, I haven't seen a candidate in a very long time that has uh, really been, been of the people. And I just think that that's what public service is about, being a man or woman of the people. And I, and I, and I, I know that I can do that, at least. I may not be a politician, but, you know, I'm a Philadelphian. That's that's exactly what we need. You know, we need people from the community like yourself coming up and, and advocating for change and, and taking those leadership positions. But um, I, I want to talk about you know policy and um, really how because I, I know your passion, what you're passionate about, criminal justice reform, Second Amendment. I want to ask you how you can implement those things. But first, I just got a quick question: Do Republicans even? Like, do Republicans get elected in Philadelphia? Because I'm in Pittsburgh, the other side of the state. Republicans Absolutely. don't get elected in Pittsburgh. Do they even bother running in Philadelphia? They do. It's a few there. Um, but they don't generally get elected. You know, I need about 20,000 votes to win. I got If I come in, like, second to one Republican, I'll get the seat. If you come in second to – so how does it work? How many, how many seats are, are up for grabs now? It's, it's a gang of them. Um, but because I'm at large, the way it goes – it's, it's a hard, it's, and that's another thing, like, it's just all these weird, like, layouts and rules to tr- designed to trick people into thinking that this is super complex because you guys just make it a little difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So in essence, without being too complicated, if I get about 20,000 votes and or come in second to one Republican because I'm on the minority ticket, right, the libertarian ticket, mm-hmm. I win a seat. You know, and it really is a popularity contest, to be perfectly honest. Those guys have a lot of money to, but the money that they have is to spend to make themselves visible. You know, pay for advertisements, do these fundraising parties, do all of this other stuff. You know, and that's cool. They're welcome to do that. You know, but it's like, do you connect with the people? Probably not. You don't. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. it's really, um, I just need about 20,000 votes. Um, I'm becoming second to one Republican and usually Republicans don't do great, you know, in Philly, which is the libertarian thing works great to me. I know there's Republican, I know Republicans from Philly that are tired of Republican politicians in Philly because they lay down every time because Philly's 80% Democrat, uh, Democratic. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all the Republicans do is lay down. So as far as the politicians go a lot of times, well, I know some very influential Republicans in Philly that are like, yo, you got my vote because they, they haven't done anything. It's just what it is, you know? So and maybe if people are afraid to rumble, people are afraid to tell the truth or they get in the political machine and just become like 
just like everybody else. I've just done three years of politicking and doing the gun industry, you know, moving around in the gun industry and seeing those politics. And I haven't changed to not be a man of the people. That's the trick. They try to run you through that machine and you don't come quite out like this as you were. Even though that who you were going into the process is actually what people needed. You know, but then you start getting super packed because these want this and that and that. As opposed to listening to the actual constituents, the actual people, the hood, whether that's white, black, suburban, rural, doesn't matter. Urban, the people. Yeah. You, when you become a politician, your voice doesn't matter so much. You don't even actually have a voice anymore. Your voice, your larynx, your voice box is now for the people. That's it. You know, and if all of the people going, damn, why is this soda? There used to be. 85 cents, a dollar 85 now. That's a problem. Oh, because the gang of that is taxes. Because we wanted to tax the people. I'm tired of just passing the buck on the people. That's corny. Come up with a better way. Hey, corporations, we'll give you different tax breaks if you choose to, uh, if the school has this, needs $10 million, you go, yo, we'll match it. We'll give $5 million. Man, give that company a couple of years tax abatement. Do it. That's for Yeah, let them, let them put their name on the school. They can they can sponsor the school. Yeah. Right, right. Like, come on, it's not that complicated. Mm-hmm. Yo, we got who wants some extra hookups on taxes? We need to help here. Let it be a sliding scale. Yo, we need ten million. If you can do two point five, we'll give you two point five years of tax abatement. If you can do five, we, these are things that we can just come up with and figure out what works best. So we're not taxing the people. The already hard working people, you're not taxing them. And on top of that, you're not ripping industry. Because, okay, we'll give up the 2.5, but they'll give us three years of tax abatement. We might save $3 million over time. School gets the 2.5 right now. It's not complicated. Yeah. You're absolutely right in needing to think outside the box. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious because I don't know how can, you know, being having a seat on city council, how can you influence something like, you know, Second Amendment rights within the city of Philadelphia or criminal justice reform? Like, what kind of influence can you have in those arenas? So, one, all of the other politicians on that on that council have to listen to me. And I got a gang of people that are way smarter than me that are already working on bills. I'll give you a perfect example, right? You know, you got Coca-Cola right now buying patents and, and strains for marijuana. If you want to do business in our city, you have to assist in training and trade, you know, trade schools. Put some of that money to the trade. If marijuana is going to be or cannabis is going to be a booming industry, we're going to need growers. We're going to need cultivators. We're going to need dryers. We're going to need, you know, uh, harvesters. We're going to need all of that. How about we, okay, this section of this class, we're putting together. We got abandoned factories. Hey, this company put this because we got some brothers coming home from jail. Mm-hmm. They need a trade. We got bills that we can... I know people over at Normal. I know people in all these different things. They're just coming up with creative ways to, you know, be philanthropic. We can still generate money. We can get some of these brothers and sisters coming home from jail. We can line them up for trade, create jobs for them. Denver and, and Colorado, Denver, excuse me, Colorado and California have shown us the way. California, not so much with the regulation around the taxes around marijuana, but as far as like showing that you can do things with c- cannabis and create jobs, you know, even the Democrats in Colorado, like a year or so ago, when uh, Sessions was in office, said, yeah, Sessions, we're going to come down on them. And they're like, no, you're not, Sessions. Even if you threaten us with not giving us federal funding, we are swimming in cannabis mm-hmm. money, tax revenue. So there are things there that I can get a gang of people, which I already have started working on doing. Hey, I'm introducing this. Hey, what's the process for this? Who do we need to talk to for this? By being in city council, it's a voice that speaks directly for the community. And I got, I mean, I've, I've already, I have billionaire friends that I can go, yo, you know somebody that can, sure I do, Maj, let me plug you with them. And then we can write legislation, legislation and present it. I want people to come home from jail with opportunity. I want people to not go to jail in the first place. I want jobs and businesses to be thriving in my city. My city used to be a mecca of industry. Boeing Jets was up on the Northeast. 
right? They built car parts and engine parts, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you got the textile manufacturing shit all through South Philly, all in North Philly. There's a huge building that's been sitting abandoned on Broad and Lehigh in North Philly, where I'm from, for at least 20 years. Used to be a huge factory, you know, uh, office building, all that other stuff. These are things that between firearms manufacturing, even if we're talking about uh, magazines or uh, uh, accessories, these are jobs. Even if you're talking about weed growing situations, these are jobs. Even if you're talking about delivery services for marijuana, if you're talking about those same brothers, if you got a weed charge, if you want to come home early, or if we, if, if before we get you out of there because marijuana is now legal. Do you want to enroll in this cultivating and, 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 you know, be a part of this? Yes. Give brothers a trade. Why aren't we teaching brothers carpentry and, and electrician uh, work again? We got a band. It used to be in the schools. Right on uh, 23rd in Lehigh in North Philly is a vocational high school. Where's the home ec classes? Where's the carpentry classes? We can use corporations and their money, give them the tax break. Financing this, you can hear me a lot better when I'm sitting on city council. <laughs> so that's yeah. the reason. And that's the issue. Absolutely. And that's, you're hitting the nail on the head with trades. There's a huge shortage in, in, in trades. I, I work in the natural gas industry and you know, people are people actually leaving. You know, white collar jobs to go into trades to make money as as welders or electricians. And um, I think that tide really is starting to turn where people are people are understanding. It's a lot of people who have wasted some time, to be honest, going to college and getting a degree they're never going to use. So they're stuck in debt, but it doesn't mean that people can't change. And like you said, people who are coming out of prison, there's a huge opportunity there because there's all these jobs that need filled. They just need to be trained. And uh, I love how you sure. said, you know, let these companies invest because, I mean, so often we have, you know, they, they try to do, uh, you know, prison get, prison training programs that don't really work or, you know, don't really address the needs and don't give the, the proper skills. Let, yeah, let the companies train people coming out. Let them, you know, teach the skills that they need. That's that's exactly what we need to do. Right. Especially, especially somebody is saying, listen, I don't need $15 an hour if the factory is literally up the street from my house. Give me 11 Give me 11 an hour. I can walk to my job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, instead of taking those jobs overseas and or you're trying to push the sanctuary cities because you want the, the, the bottom dollar labor, you can get the best of both worlds. You can redevelop the community. You can get that blight, that, that eyesore that's been abandoned for 10 years. You can get that out of the way. You can tra- train brothers. You can have you can instead of having to spend five, seven, nine dollars, okay, we'll give them ten, we'll give them eleven. But then that person's in the community; they can walk home to take their lunch break, come back. We can really make the hood great again, literally. And we start that local with local politics, one step at a time. So I'm just going to jump in the ring. I'm going to acknowledge the fact that I am not as politically uh, trained. As all you fancy pants degree having people. I'm not. But I know how to solve problems. And if, and if Donald Trump is the president of the United States, I can be the councilman of Philadelphia. Absolutely. One thing you and Donald Trump do have in common is you both have name rec- recognition, which helps tremendously in politics, obviously. So that's, I mean, that, that's a huge yeah. thing right there. It, I mean, the the media, the local media in Philly can try to ignore you. But like you were saying earlier, the more that they ignore you, the more it's going to become blatantly obvious that they're just ignoring you, and that's going to work to your advantage. Before I let you go, Maj, if exactly. you could, if you could tell everyone, neglect is our ally. Absolutely. If you could tell everyone, uh, first off, when the election is, and then secondly, uh, just say again, promote how people can get involved, how they can donate, how they can volunteer to help you get signatures, uh, all that stuff. Yeah. So the election is this November, November the fifth. I'm not mistaken. The fifth or the sixth, one of the days. I'll say the fifth because I don't want you to show up a day later. <laughs> show up both days. <laughs> uh, right, show up both days. Uh, and uh, if anybody wants to support, the biggest ways that you guys can support is actually three ways. Um, one, obviously we're running the, Go- the GoFundMe for Black Guns Matter. That is a separate 
transaction of money and the money shall not intertwine. Mm -hmm. One is against campaign finance law. Okay. So but the quicker we get the fundraising, we only got maybe $17,000 left to raise for GoFundMe so we can get rid of, not get rid of, but book all of the events for the entire year of 2019, the rest of the year. So getting that GoFundMe out of the way will help me focus again. I don't have to fundraise in two places. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for that, GoFundMe.com forward slash Black Guns Matter. That money is a separate thing that has nothing to do with the big campaign. The, bet, the campaign fundraising is Maj or Philly dot com. People can go there. They can donate. The largest individual donation is $6,000. That's the largest one individual can make. If you have a pack, the largest donation is $23,000. You go on the website, you just hit donate. Um, and that's all throughout the campaign. Maj or Philly dot com. Um, and if you want to, while I'm around the planet doing this work all for the community if you want to help me like make a living right because i can't touch the gofundme money that's for black mm -hmm. guns matter the campaign money is for the campaign that those will never intertwine if you want to help me buy some merch man because then whatever i can do with my money i can do with my money you can get the merch uh the shirts the make racist straight afraid again shirts the black guns matter shirts the all gun control is racist shirts the uh, Make Your Hood Great Again. All of those shirts are available at blackgunsmatter.myshopify.com. And those are the three areas uh, that everybody can help. And if you're in Philly, on the uh, Maj for Philly website, you can donate, come out with us, get these signatures, let's sign people up, let's get people to the polls, uh, and let's, uh, let's put an actual uh, person that is for and from the community, you know, in that city councilman, see that large. Right on. Maj Teray, thank you for coming on Felony Friday, man. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you in a bit. All right. Exciting stuff from Maj Teray. A lot going on. You know, really cool. It's awesome to have a libertarian with uh, the name recognition that Maj Teray has running in a city like Philadelphia where he can win and he can make some noise. And not only that, he's not just uh, one of those libertarians that the party goes out and gets because they have name recognition. He actually walks the walk. I mean, he's been for the past two years. He's had his uh, activism with Black Guns Matter going across the entire country, educating people about gun rights and self-defense and uh, de-escalation and communication, all that good stuff. So this is a guy that uh, is not looking, you know, he's said this many times, he's not looking for, you know, the state to solve problems. He's looking for, or in, in the case of this, for the city of Philadelphia to solve problems, he's looking for ways that uh, we can bring in voluntary exchange and bring in private enterprise and, you know, solve these problems together as people. You know, so often we look to government for the solutions. And when I, when I say we, I don't mean probably most of the people listening to this show is not the we I'm talking about. The we I'm talking about is Everybody else out there in the United States and pretty much every other human being out there looks to some sort of form of central authority. They look to that government authority to solve their problems, to solve uh, if they have education problems or, you know, if they have problems with the roads or, or things like that. Something as simple as filling potholes. We're always looking, or I should say people are always looking to government to solve those problems. And Maj and I like the way he talks, too. He talks in a very um, non-traditional uh, libertarian way. Uh, there's no condescension in the way that he talks. He's not you know, talking down to people, as I hear from a lot of libertarians. Unintentional, of course, but very frequently when you hear libertarians talk about uh, the principles of liberty, uh, it comes off very, very condescending. I'm better than you. You're stupid. You don't understand how great freedom is. You're an idiot. Maj talks about it in a way where, as we talked about it at the, at the beginning of this interview, he's making a connection. He's not walking in a room saying, hey, I'm a libertarian. Look at me. I'm wearing a funny hat. No, he's saying, hey, I am a, a Maj Touré, and I'm a guy. And let's, let's talk about, you know, what are you interested in? You know, what, what problems do you have in your life? What's going on with you? And make that connection right there. That is so freaking key to advance in politics and so key for the Libertarian Party to make any noticeable change. So I'm excited to see what Maj Charest does. If you want to hear more from Maj, he's been on 
the show twice in the past. We did a an interview back on episode 62 of this show. You can find that at lionsofliberty.com slash FF62. And I also interviewed him. He was at the Libertarian National Convention, as we talked about. I interviewed him live in person there. You can find that interview uh, along with, there's a couple of inter- interviews there. I think he's the first one in that in that set for this episode. It can be found at lionsofliberty.com slash FF131. So check those out. Uh, more great stuff from Maj Touré. And I know I'm on the other side of the state in Pennsylvania. Uh, Maj is obviously running for city council in Philly. I can't vote for him. I'm excited to see uh, what comes from this. I'm excited to see what kind of impact somebody with the name recognition that Maj Maj has and the ability to communicate with the local community there in Philadelphia. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited to watch it. And with that being said, guys, if you like this show, please subscribe on wherever you listen. Whatever app you're listening to, uh, using to listen to this podcast, please subscribe there. And if you really, really, really like us, please consider visiting our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Lions of Liberty, tossing us a few bones, joining one of the levels there. If you join just for $5 and up, you get access to our bonus content, all that good stuff. And then as the levels go up, you get more and more and more stuff, and it's all fantastic. So check that all out. We appreciate all of you. We I appreciate you. Even if you're, you know, not gonna become a, a patron, if you're not gonna join our Alliance for Liberty Pride, but if you're not gonna do any of that, uh, please consider sharing this show. Let's spread the word, guys. That's all I got. This is John Odermatt signing off. Always remember to keep your head up, and the fire is a liberty burning. <laughs>